So the first thing we want to talk about is digital molecular matter, or DMM technology, which is a technology that allows us to simulate the way the materials behave in the real world based upon real world properties. So wood will break like wood, glass will break like glass, metal will even dent like metal. So what we have here is a piece of plywood that's actually authored using the traditional methods for breakables. And what we have is we built one piece of plywood that's whole and then a broken piece of plywood that will actually swap on the fly when Adam goes ahead and uh, shoots a Death Star ball here to break it. So there you can see that that piece of plywood did break. This is how everybody else authors breakables in games, even on next gen. And it's not very interesting because it doesn't take into account the direction of the impact, the, the force of the impact, the size of the object that's actually hitting it. And it looks pretty much the same every single time. But if we move down the hallway, we can show you a piece of plywood that actually has digital molecular matter applied. And here you can see that it breaks differently every single time. It actually takes into account forces in the real physical world world and it behaves like you would expect plywood to do. And every time we reset this, you can actually see that it will break differently and again provide just a level of realism and fidelity that is absent in most games. This is a data-driven system because it's a simulation, which really allows us to uh, experiment. So on the fly with a button press, Adam can go ahead and change this plywood from kind of a soft plywood to a tougher wood. And again, you can see that it behaves very realistically. It behaves like you would expect tougher wood to, to behave. This allows our designers unprecedented freedom to kind of explore the way that these materials might behave in our gameplay worlds in order to get the things that look the most realistic or the most authentic, but also that are most fun. And what Euphoria is, is it's a system that allows us to give our characters biomechanical AI. It literally infuses them with a central nervous system, uh, a brain and a spinal cord and a nervous system and even muscles that allow them to act by reflex. So as Adam throws some stormtroopers up here, what you'll see is they'll try to protect themselves. They know that they're being thrown kind of into the empty space there and that they're about to fall to their deaths unless they can grab onto some of these beams. So they'll actually try and grab on. They'll try and grab onto one another as well. And this is all simulation based. None of this is being driven by animation, uh, which is, again, uh, really cutting edge technology here and not something that you'll see in any other games except for LucasArts games. And there you can see uh, an example of a behavior of two stormtroopers grabbing onto one another. Again, that, that sense of self-preservation as they try to protect themselves from that fall. Now, the other thing to observe here is not only do we have characters interacting with the environment in a very realistic way, but the environment knows about those characters. So these guys know that there's that beam that they can grab on to, but the beam also knows about them. So as those stormtroopers grab a hold of the beam, the beam will actually splinter under their weight and bend and the stress will actually show and eventually they'll break. So again, our games are not just about having you know, really entertaining and high fidelity interactions with the environment or with characters, but also having those other characters interact with the environment in meaningful and high fidelity ways.